what if I'm wrong? Like, what if this is meaningless? And even though logically, rationally, I've studied all the proof and evidences from all religions, right? And especially Islam and every, I always come back to Islam. I always keep coming back to Islam, but I just have this, it's just a weird feeling like of doubt. You know, I do dua, right? I make zikr, you know, like amantu billahi wa rasuli and, but the thing is like, nothing's working. So I don't, I don't know if you guys can like have like a different perspective and maybe it is an intellectual doubt because the thing is, I'm in my head, I'm thinking like, oh, what if there's this other religion out there that I don't know that I'm supposed to be following? What if there is, there's no God in them? Like, what if like Muslims are like brainwashing me and stuff? So, cause I actually do have OCD like in other aspect, but I didn't know like it could like shape, shift form into a, like a religious type, right? But Dr. Imran, I mean, if one is, um... Uh, and obviously you'll know more about this, but if one is perhaps suffering from OCD in certain aspects of their life, can that carry uh, through to things like, um, uh, you know, religion and belief and conviction and these type of things? Or do these things generally stay, stay isolated um, just to those particular aspects of one's life? Or, or do well, they... Yeah. These things can carry, so it's not a. It's a. It's just an indicative that you're overthinking things, and you're, um, you know, this is part of the what what you're dealing with, brother. So, I think this is a combination of things that that are going on. the The main thing actually is is that I, this is not just one thing. So you, yes, this is this is the anxiety part of the OCD. This is um, you overthinking things because that's what the OCD will will do as well. Uh, also, that your journey that you've been on, it's very hard to. Uh, you said to 2021 you had the you know the well, the unfortunate incident and or well, actually in a bigger picture this is going back to the story of the uh, the very fortunate incident that made you reflect on your life and brought you back to to islam um in, in, a, in a way that you're practicing more alhamdulillah so you know and i've interestingly been through similar experiences where uh, you know things have happened that have been terrible on the surface but their outcome has been uh, you know better in terms of dean so i think that when you when, once you when you when you make this journey when you have this journey this transition there there are things from your previous way of being that will follow you uh, and that will affect you and often these things thoughts will come and obviously shaitan will also be jumping on this bandwagon and pulling on you know those things that will make you more likely to second guess but if you've got the intellectual arguments already then you know that this is not an intellectual problem you said that you could answer the questions that would come so this is a problem that's coming from another aspect. So it's either going to be an emotional, psychological issue, or with an aspect of the, you know, the shaitan putting his two pence worth in and trying to affect you. And one of the ways that you can, uh, there's many ways of tackling this. I'm sure Abbas will give a list of things, but one of the ways of tackling this uh, is the consistency, doing your the practices that you're required to do on a consistent basis, because that that consistency will lead you to a place where um, you start to develop the further aspects of it. So it's like when you're driving a car, when you first get into the car, you know, even after a long time, if you haven't driven and you're, you know, you're, you're first getting to the car, you sort of, your focus is on, have I got the gear in the right place? And, you know, have, am I, where's my indicator? You're, you're checking your surroundings. And so your, your concerns and your worries are really here. As you get a bit better, you start looking at just, your bonnet beyond your bonnet to where you know there's a car coming i need to just move out this near my bonnet when you become an advanced driver you don't you're not thinking about changing gears you, because it's all automatic now you're not thinking about indication your eyes are actually a mile down the road checking where where you need what position you need to be in to avoid the and these are these are similar uh, skills uh, and, and ways of being in any aspect of your life so when it comes to your religion once you get over the learning the getting back into the basics and practicing then you start to you know your your salah and your khushu will come in your salah you'll start to have an these extra feelings of connection and then you ramp up some of your you know i'm going to do some zikr i'm going to read my adhkar i'm going to make sure that i'm giving doing tawbah all of these things will become part of your way of being and then what happens is that you um you start to get the real the benefits of it but initially this you're in i would say that sounds like you're still in this sort of transition phase where you're where you're getting there and so a lot of these things are coming back but ultimately, if the, if Islam is telling you to live in a in a way which is good for you as a human being, so if even if you take the idea that you know, okay, we're wrong uh, about you know uh, there being a creator or not creator, you're in a, you're in a better position than someone with no guidance at all who's drinking his head off and you know living that sort of life because ultimately it won't make a difference to them. But you've lived a more productive life where you are. So I hope uh, I hope you um, 
I hope that, I mean, there's a lot of information in there. So it's not yeah. simple, straightforward. One, th one thing is the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. But be persistent and consistent and continue. Uh, and if you know it's not intellectual, then you know where it's coming from. And that maybe you need to deal with those parts of the, of the thing. Sorry, brother, you were going to say something. Definitely. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Like, I guess maybe like the biggest concern right now is um, like, it's that like, uh, oh, what if I'm wrong? Like about everything. I, I guess like that's the intellectual thing. It's like, what if there's something out there that we don't know? Do you know, like a different belief system or something? But logically, that doesn't make sense because I mean, I've, I've went through everything. So I don't know. And yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's very yeah. overwhelming just keeping to it like also brother Fahan you know the thing is that I, I, I uh, let me ask you a question do you while sleeping at night you know uh, when you're dozing off do you ever have concerns about your mother being your mother or your father being your father <laughs> actually when like this all started I did <laughs> yeah okay but now so, I don't now okay, I don't. okay 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 but the thing there is now if you start having these type of uh, uh, you know uh, concerns yeah. which you yourself you said you recognize to be irrational yeah okay I, I would say f the first thing you do is be kind to yourself mm -hmm. don't don't be unkind to yourself whereby having the thought somehow is something negative okay mm -hmm. because it, it, it it's a condition o ocd is a condition it, it, mashallah, you're clearly a very articulate, mashallah, very intelligent individual. You've managed to do your research. You're convinced about Islam. But be kind. To, Islam is about being kind to yourself as well. We're not supposed to live in perpetual guilt. Uh, and and if we don't live a perfect life, then we somehow, you know, have fallen. We, none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. And OCD or no OCD, these thoughts will come into your mind sometimes. Uh, because they're not controllable necessarily. Some thoughts are not controllable. They just come into your mind. Mm -hmm. So some of the things I think you might find helpful is that when a thought like this comes in your, your head, the first thing you do is you you do tawbah, astaghfirullah, and a'udhu billah. I, I seek refuge from shaitan. The other thing you might want to do is just remind yourself, and this is where Brother Mokid was saying about m memory uh, and how we can, uh, you know, once, of course, we have done the research, which you have done, and you're convinced that Islam is, is true, is that you say, this is just Wiswas, or this is just my OCD. I have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just keep repeating this, inshallah ta'ala. And the fact that you're, you're not having a lot of tension about these thoughts entering you will make it easier to deal with them. I see, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, when we try to really hold back those thoughts, the thoughts get stronger, they come over even more. I, I would say don't fight it. I would say, look, I know I suffer from OCD. I know that I have these things that just pop in. I know it can be over this. You know, half of the issue or sometimes even more than half of the issue of sorting something out is recognizing that there is a, a problem or a concern or an issue in the first place. Which, mashallah, you've already, you know, accepted that it probably is my OCD because I'm like this with other things, right? So be kind to yourself. Uh, just say, Audhu Billah, and say, I have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because I would assure you that is, let me ask you a question, brother Fahan. Is, <laughs> Faham, sorry. Is there anything that you believe with certainty where you don't have doubt? So, for example, <laughs> do you believe that uh, Australia exists, for example? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. I think right. so. <laughs> do you do, we, do you have doubts that Australia exists? No, no, no. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Say there's a thousand times, or if not a million times, more evidence for the mm -hmm. Quran being a miracle of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There's a million times more evidence that the Quran is preserved. Mm -hmm. There's a million times more evidence, infinitely more, I would say, evidence. That it's a miracle of Allah Definitely. and revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And so what I'm trying to say to you by that is that sometimes just sit down and rationalize these things and say, look, if I don't doubt Australia exists, yeah. then, and there's less evidence, I would say, and even though this might sound balmy to people, people might think, what's he talking about? 
But Australia is somewhere, if you've never visited, you're purely relying upon the testimony of other people. Definitely. Whether it's photographs, whether it's videos, whether it's shows or documentaries or whatever, it's all based on yes. multiple attested or valid, let's say, uh, collaborated testimony, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Quran, however, is different. It's something you can hold in your hand. Mm -hmm. That's something you, can, you can investigate. Literally, it's tangible. It's right there, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I would say to you is, inshallah, you know, not play these tricks on yourself, but Mm -hmm. You know, just, just rationalize it by saying the fact that I accept other things based upon less evidence, mm -hmm. there is more evidence for this that I should accept it without having any doubts, inshallah. So therefore, if I am getting doubts, I can recognize that it's not a rational reason, mm -hmm. but there's something else going on. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, of course, I would say, and this is the first thing that we should all do, of course, is do dua. <laughs> Pray to Allah to help you with this, inshallah ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And if you can, at least sometimes wake up for tahajjud. For sure. So before fajr, in the last third of the night, just do it with the intention for tawbah, for forgiveness, and mm -hmm. to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do, do it with that intention that, Ya Allah, it's, it's the dead of night, and I want to stand in front of you for no other reason but to, to attain your favor, your forgiveness, and your closeness. Definitely. And inshallah ta'ala, you know, these things will all make a huge difference, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Brother Jordan, did you want to add anything to that at all? Yeah, I'll be quick because you both have done such a beautiful job, comrades. Uh, Salam alaikum, Faham. Waalaikum uh, did, did you say you're, um, so are you a revert? No, 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 I'm not. Like, I was born into a Muslim family, but. Born into a Muslim family, but you've only been practicing for a couple of years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I guess I was I was trying to I mean I, you know I, I'm sure it's more or less the same thing whether you're Bulmas and Wariva if you started practicing, you know what we uh, if thou are and from from experience of I've met from other reverts and that first year or two is always a tough time you know it's always a tough time you you get shaky um, and you do get these doubts and and I think first thing you know, I, I'm not an expert in OCD and stuff but I think this it's normal you know don't feel bad that you're having these doubts I think particularly if you're new. You know, some for for me when I was um, sort of growing into Islam, um, just learning about Tawheed, learning about my aqida, um, getting the basics, building a solid foundation. You know, more so than all the other knowledge out there, I found that to be to to be really helpful. Um, the other thing for me, and I don't know if you have it, is I've I've been blessed to have beautiful brothers around me. I've, I've surrounded myself with practicing brothers. So, you know, when I get to meet them, it's, it's an imam boost. I'm not, I'm not, if I, if I was dealing with non-practicing people regularly, I'm sure those doubts would have been creeping in a lot more. So I don't know if you, what you have around you, I'm, I'm just sort of guessing, but I'm just telling you what, what helped me in my journey um, was, was focusing on the basics. And even now I go back to sometimes look at the basics um, mm -hmm. and still try and build upon them just to check my roots are still firm. And I think surrounding yourself with, with Muslims, I think the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, is it something like if you're the fifth, you know, if you're the uh, is it four fools and you'll be the fifth, four pious brothers and you'll be the fifth, you know? So so make sure you are the fifth of those pious brothers. 